Hey guys, it may look like I'm just mucking about in the mud, but really, I bring you a vlog that's the first of its kind. The vlog where I explore everything that makes Pakistanis proud, their traditions, their heritage, and their arts, right here in the heart of Sindh. I mean, even for me, it's a surprise to see. So this place looks pretty industrial, a little bit rough and dusty, right? But this is actually the very spot where many of Pakistan's favorite and loveliest accessories are made. Yep, I am at a glass bangle factory here in Hyderabad. And I'm gonna show you guys how glass bangles are made from start to finish. Shall we go and check it out? Chalo. It all starts with this, heaps of discarded glass, which are recycled in this very facility and nothing is left, not a single shard is left. All that glass is thrown into giant ovens and melted, piece by piece, until it becomes this stream of molten lava and glass, fiery red and looking pretty dangerous. All of this is then shaped into circles. These, these are the freshly baked bangles. Literally, they are straight out of the oven. You know, they may not be painted or colorful just yet, but this is the original thing. This, this is how it all begins. These baby bangles are then shaped properly and separated. This is not the end of the process, however. Afterwards, they are transported to a special facility where they will be decorated and colored in all the vibrant colors that you see in the final product. We finally got here. We finally got to the place where these bangles are all put together and colored and then distributed to shops, not just here in Hyderabad, but pretty much all over the country. And this is what you find here. <laughs> Wait, this is so heavy. <laughs> what if I put them all on? I hope this gave you a better idea of how these amazing glass bangles are made right here in Hyderabad. But as beautiful as these glass bangles are, that is not the whole picture. And right now, I'm gonna take you on a slightly different kind of arts trip. We're gonna check out the Adrak. Is there anything more Cindy than the Cindy Adrak? I mean, these beautiful patterns and this beautiful print is famous pretty much all across the world, and it is from right here in Sindh. I want to show you today how the Adrak is actually made because the process is pretty incredible and eye-open. And here we are at the Latif Adrak Center. And this, these are the stamps, all handmade. This is where it all begins. These stamps are the things that the artists use to create intricate patterns on all the adraks that you see in the markets and yes all of them are made by hand step by step one step by another intricate step the entire process takes about 40 days to complete would you believe that so much work goes into a single adrak all the dyes that are used in this process are natural and this this may look like a piece of coal or something like that but actually this is indigo stone I mean that's what we've just called it now it's probably called something completely different but this when liquefied is what gives the Andrax some Andrax their blue color who would have thought? eventually they are all hand dyed in different colors with the indigo stone or with other colors 
all natural dyes and then dried out in the sun until they become just like this. This is the final product. This is what they actually look like once they're made. And look at this. They just come in all these incredible, vibrant colors. I'm not sure which one I want. I want to get all of these actually. Blue, the traditional red. Then there's this black one with a dancing girl. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> Beautiful, no? So these are, these are actually made out of cotton. So this is the very traditional adrak. You know what, I think I'm gonna splurge here, to be honest. This all looks so beautiful. I'm gonna get some gifts for my family. And so, equipped with about 10 new adrags and a ton of new knowledge about how they are actually made, I was ready to move on to the next piece of craft here in Sindh. The incredible thing that I just simply did not expect of Sindh is that right here in this small area, around Bicha and around Hala, this is where you find so many of these traditional crafts and people who in the tiny little warehouses make various traditional things by hand. Everything here is made by hand. This is pretty cool. The charpai is basically like a traditional Pakistani casual bed that you find in all parts of the country, north to south, east to west, everywhere. And this, apparently, is where they're made. And here it is, probably my favorite kind of craftsmanship. Why? Because it reminds me of my grandfather, who also was a carpenter. And whenever I looked at his work, I felt it was like magic. Creating a piece of art, something functional out of nothing. Carving out a piece of wood to create a sculpture. And painting it carving it out, sculpting it in all different ways until it becomes almost unrecognizable. Like a magic trick that you'd use on a child. Where you don't even know how fast the magic is happening. Until it's right there, in front of you. Something that had never existed before. This is the final product. This is what actually comes out as if a piece of magic peeled out of nowhere. I'm not really sure how this uncle made it happen, but he did. And look, we're getting some pictures. Wow. You made this? Yep. He made this. Look at this. That's amazing. Zanadas. Wow, look at this is uncle sitting on this beautiful swing that he made himself. Kupsudet. I want one of these. Can I get one of these? I would like one of these as well. Kupsudet. It's the only word I have for it. I had so much respect for these artists and these craftsmen right here in Sindh, and I was still only halfway through my journey. Well, needless to say, they inspired me to create some of my own craft, right there with a cup of chai and enabled by Jazz Super 4G creating vlogs for Facebook and YouTube for you all to see and join in the art of Pakistan. Our arts extravaganza today is not yet over. There's a lot more that I want to show you. And so my next stop is a place that specializes in making kashi pottery. But before I tell you all about kashi pottery and all the theory behind it, let me show you how it's actually made in practice. Chalo. The process of how pottery is made has fascinated me for years because it starts with a brick of clay. That's it. A brick of clay on a rotating wheel. And a human hand that shapes it into something that is completely new. Something that does not in any way resemble what we knew that clay to be before. Something that becomes an ornate sculpture. It happens so quickly we don't even see it happening. Yeah, that's why I'm playing it in super speed mode for you. <laughs> but this is how it happens, in the skilled hands of someone who has practiced this labor for years. Not like me. Although, of course, I wanted to try, but this is where it all started to go wrong. My first lesson, don't touch the water. And my second lesson, pay a bit more attention to your teacher, who clearly knows what he is doing, while you do not. <laughs> I tried, okay, and the first attempt failed. That's fine. I thought, 
we can do it again. So, I listened. I paid more attention, so I tried again. And as I put my hands to the work and tried to create something that had never existed before, I failed again. <laughs> so I thought, okay, let's give this one more chance, the third try. Was I gonna pull it off? I guess something was created. Once shaped, these pots are all shoved into a big oven where they are baked. After that, once they are dry, they will be painted by master painters. It's not just vases and plates though. There's pretty much everything from cups to little plates to pots of tea. In Sindhi, this is called kashi pottery, which basically means blue art. And that's actually no coincidence. Four and a half thousand years ago, in the Indus Valley civilization, which used to reign in these regions, that's the color that people preferred to use for their decoration, for their own fashion and their own style. And it's pretty amazing actually to think that still today, in 2019, four and a half thousand years later, this color is being used to decorate people's homes. That's actually kind of mind-blowing. I want to dedicate this vlog to all the artists whose hard work, blood, sweat and tears go into the making of Pakistan's heritage and Pakistan's tradition. All these people who behind the scenes work relentlessly to bring us all the beauty that we know to exist. Shukriya. Jad sukhe